how are you? Welcome to CEO, CEO where we promote empowering information about Africans and Africa and um, all our lives. Today, I will be exploring how stereotyping women and tropes are used to silence women, to silence our voices. You know, I joke often that um, I became fully black when I came to <laughs> North America you know, in my early 20s. I mean, I'm born and raised in Nigeria, but um, from my early 20s, I was blessed to start working with multilateral, multiracial organizations. So I've, had, I've done that for over 20 years. And um, I was conscious of social justice issues because I, I come from the middle belt, um, the Niger Delta of Nigeria, and became conscious of um, how the resources in our land was being abused against us so was aware of social justice issues economic justice issues regarding the exploitation of our lands our farmlands for oil so came with that mindset and i was known to be a passionate you know advocate for social justice issues and that came in my communication style i had that approach but was not really fully aware into the racial dynamics until i left nigeria to north america to work and now to school and work and I found myself in international organization working with other races and came with just that passionate communication style about social justice issues and um, from the onset I started sensing some reactions especially from my white female colleagues there was a particular incident and I work hard I'm one of those you give me I'm not you got an assignment or something to do I will go overboard to do it and we're supposed to meet and she would not show up so after a while I sent I called and said this is what we're going to do you didn't come for the planning board we're doing this presentation tomorrow and I, I don't like looking bad so I'm ready and um, she came really sulking in the meeting and Two days later, I had another more senior white woman who came into my office to explain how this other colleague of mine was really upset. I seemed to, you know, I, 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 I was a little bit too tough on, the, on how I was pushing and my communication, the way she didn't show up in two meetings. And I was devastated and broken because I thought we needed to do a good job and we did it and she didn't show up for the meetings. And could not understand how suddenly I was the bad person. I was maybe too aggressive in the way I collaborated with her I was not I needed to and she actually cried to this older woman the woman told me she cried you you were not I don't I'm trying not to mention her name but I can see picture both of them you know she cried and and and, and it happened and I was devastated and really worried and this happened a couple of times again and it opened my eyes to start looking into what it means to work as a black woman in a multiracial environment in North America and I have been learning since then. I'm fully still not there. And then at that time, I came across about 10 years ago, or maybe less, what I was dealing with. I was wrestling with the phenomenon of the angry black woman. You see, I was representing critical social justice issues. I was working at that time, 20 years ago, around issues that affected our First Nations of Canada, Aboriginal rights issues, many issues like that. And I was very passionate about advocating for critical issues regarding violence, ending violence against Aboriginal women, regarding um, restitution, reconciliation on residential school abuses, and major other critical human rights issues. I was uh, in making presentation to the Senate in Canada. I was, you know, and I was not sleepy. I loved my job. I walked overboard. I brought in the extras. But the more I did, the more I ran into very unhappy white women who complained about me you know they would just say oh i am so i was too, i'm too aggressive and and i i did achieve a lot <laughs> majority of the issues that i represented human rights issues that i fought for you know were resolved for the vulnerable people i did that um but continue to wrestle with that and always felt sad about that until i ran into actually what I was dealing with. It was a phenomenon in mainly North America, the concept on the tropes of the angry black woman. And I got the, the definition online, which is more from Wikipedia, which I love because they capture some of the critical issues we deal with. Please let me read it out to you so that I don't miss a thing or misrepresent it. It says here that um, 
Uh, my phone is old. Just a minute. <laughs> it says here that um, that um, the angry black woman. It says this: for decades, many black women worked within the confinement confinement from fear of being labeled an angry black woman. The angle, angry black woman stereotype is a trope in American society that portrays African-American women, black women, as sassy, ill-mannered, and ill-tempered by nature. Carolyn West defines the angry black woman as a template, the angry black overall, as a template for portraying, portraying almost all black women and as serving several purposes. You know, the concept of the angry black woman, which I, I realized now I was encountering, serves a purpose. West sees it as passion and righteous indignation. When you come in with passion and righteous indignation in fighting, you know, injustice and, you know, social injustice, it's often misread as irrational anger and is used to silence and shame black women who dare to challenge social inequalities, complain about their circumstances or demand fair treatment. This is interesting. So the concept of the angry black woman is used to silence and shame black women who dare to challenge social inequalities, complain about their circumstances or demand fair treatment. It is defined even further by Pilgrim in 2015 as that it is a social control mechanism that is employed to punish black women who violated the social societal norms that encourage them to be passive, civil, non-threatening and unseen. You know, it's, it's, it's just interesting. And, 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 and today, I continue to navigate that space. You know, I continue to navigate my commitment, my passion, my love of my, my commitment to social justice and my willingness to sacrifice, to work hard, to take the, go the extra mile to, to ensure that we, I make my mark and contribution to a world where we are all treated equal, where social justice is available to all. I continue to navigate, manage my passion and commitment with the fear, you know, of being of being seen and perceived as the angry black woman. And in spite of all this, I always fail. I might be engaged in a process for three years. I just need to basically express that I was not happy once and suddenly I'm labeled. I get somebody coming that, oh, they were not happy with the way you responded. And it, it is something that I'm realizing is a badge I have to navigate as I continue to be commit, committed to ensure I run my race and, and be committed to my passion. Now, until now, five, you know, recently in the last two months, I ran into a, that concept for white women. Trolling or, you know, all over the internet is the concept today of a Karen. Now, Wikipedia has a definition of Karen too. Karen is a pejorative term used in the United States and, under, or, and other English speaking countries for a woman perceived as entitled or demanding beyond the scope of what is appropriate or necessary. A common stereotype of a Karen is that of a white woman who uses her privilege to demand her own way at the expense of others. Usually, the women filmed on the Karen, there are tons of it, there are Karen compilations of white women enraged, angry, you know, and I, I'm not supportive of this, just as I, I, I have not, I have had to deal with the badge, wrestling with the stereotype of the angry black woman. I am not happy that white women today are being portrayed, middle-aged white women especially, as Karens, white entitled women who would demand for the law to be used to maintain their own privilege. That's how Karens are, you know. So the images you find of Karens online are women who are screaming, calling the police and actually lying. There's a story of a woman which went viral who held a dog in a bird watching space field where dogs are supposed to be on the leash. And a black man tells her, please, could you put your dog on the leash? This is a bird watching place. And she called the cops and screaming. Oh, there's a, and she was the aggressor threatening the black man but she was calling the cops saying the black man was threatening her and this black man filmed it and it went virile and there are other images like this of white women you know but then again i say it's not just about that what about why is it that women are the ones that are held by restrained by 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 this kind of stereotypes you know and uh, why 
is it usually women? I think it silences us. It silences us as women, it steals a voice. We're not able to speak when we have to wrestle with being perceived negatively. And that's why I'm not excited about the current concept, although it's gone very right. Although, sadly, in the workplace, we have experienced the currents. Those who, like what I was experiencing as I was dealing with the, with the, uh, the, the uh, with wrestling with escaping, not walking under the badge of the angry black woman, they were the currents who were waiting to, who would basically interpret what they saw as the law or they won't speak to you directly. They'll call somebody else and say, this is the, it's like, pull the authority to back me up. The sense of privilege that we must operate in my own terms at the level I'm comfortable with. Anything outside that, then you're threatening my comfort and privilege. So I'm going to deplore <laughs> a higher authority who, you know, to, to put in line. So that, that sadly is so, but, but having expressed and stated my discomfort with the way women are branded, which silences their voice, subsumes the messages and the voice, I'm hopeful that this recent branding of white women as Karens, which I, I think is unfortunate, would encourage us all as women to work together. We should not allow the branding of other races. We should, should not use it for our own advantage to advance our own goals, personal goals and personal comfort. We should be watchful as women, how we deplore stereotypes of other women to silence their voice. Because it's happening, it's, black women have been dealing with that as the angry, angry black women. Now, white women are called Karens, privileged white women who lie you know, exaggerate situations, who are the aggressors, but call, you know, call others as aggressors to deploy legal system, to deploy authorities to back their back up their privilege. And this both these concepts, both these stereotypes, they silence us equally as women. And this is an opportunity to come together to start addressing them. One way we can do that is not to use it on each other. Watch it when you join a language to start branding black women as angry black women. And black women, we've been there. We know how terrible it is. So let's, let's, let's cut some slack <laughs> um, to, to the perceived currents, those we run into in the workplaces. And let's remind ourselves that it's overall a way to silence us as women. We all suffer the impact together. We should work together. We can do this together. I don't buy into the concept of the black the angry black women, woman, because it's used to silence black women, you know, to, to, to push black women into a place of servitude. It's used, misused, and many black women sit silently and absorb abuse for fear of being labeled as such. Many black women do not push hard and go for what they want and bring in their best to the table because they may be perceived as angry black women and that badge could be used to silence them. And today we have white women dealing with the same thing. The Karen in the last five years has grown as a tag on white women, portraying white women as, as liars, as aggressors, as who, who, who would threaten as aggressors and lie on others to just to push their privilege and deploy authorities to back them up, back their privilege. It's, it, it, it's, it, both, both images and tags are just not right because it's not true. We should work. It's not completely true. There are elements of that. Yeah. You know, there are those who abuse it because we've seen images of Karens, sadly, all over the internet. And they are terrible. They are terrible because it, it shows there are those elements in amongst white women because it's captured on the internet. It's all over the internet. But, um, but not all white women are so. And sadly, this kind of tag of Karen would sadly silence some other white women who would have something very important to say what the world needs to hear in the workplace in every other realm of life so let's work together let's challenge the ease with which women are attacked and stereotyped because collectively it silences a voice it deprives the world of a message a gift thank you thanks for watching don't forget to click like and subscribe thank you okay.